here's the story. And maybe you got a chance to follow this, but uh, there was a, a fishing tournament that was in uh, Upper uh, Ohio here. And uh, it was the Lake Erie Walleye Tournament called Loot, L-E-W-T, Lake Erie Walleye Trail. And uh, the winners were disqualified because they found weights in the fish that they caught. And there's a lot of money at stake here. The winning prize was close to $29,000. But these guys have been winning. This is a, a season-long event. They start in the summer, and it wraps up uh, this past Friday. And you may have seen the video, and uh, it went viral, as the kids like to say. They cut open the fish, and you saw the weights fall out. <laughs> so it became a big deal that they're cheating in fishing, and these guys have won close to $300,000. These, these guys are like the Lance Armstrong of uh, fishing here. <laughs> they're Barry Bonds, McGuire and Sosa. But uh, Matt Markey covers the event, covered the event. He's the outdoors editor for uh, the Toledo Blade, and he joins us on the program Matt, thanks for joining us. Explain the tournament for our audience. This particular tournament was the championship for that Lake Erie Walleye Trail circuit, and it involved um, probably 30 or 40 two-person teams. And the top prize would have been, with bonuses and all, maybe thirty to $40,000. But there's a lot of uh, other tournaments, including two major tournaments that take place uh, from the middle of October till the weekend after Thanksgiving. And in those, um, both of those have more than 400000 in total prize money with 125000 150000 going to the winner. So the, the stakes are a lot higher than, than most people would think uh, when it comes to walleye fishing. When did we know that there was uh, something up? We knew, I've been hearing it for about a year with this particular pair. Behind the scenes, guys whispering, you know, complaining and all, but nobody willing to make a formal complaint or to charge them, you know, in the public square. But there have been a lot of rumors in it. Most of them involved this particular pair. But once this tournament, uh, the first day was held, you come in, there's a way in, there's some pomp and circumstance with it all up on a stage and, and they kind of make it a, uh, you know, a PT Barnum thing. And when these fish came up, any Lake Erie walleye fisherman will know if you hand them a 25 inch fish, it should weigh between four and five pounds. And if you hand them a 30 inch fish, they will know within six, eight ounces what it should weigh. These two guys brought their fish up, and the tournament director, who's been doing this a long time, holds this fish up, and to him, it looks like a five-pound fish. He puts it on the scale, and it weighs seven pounds. And because of all the accusations behind the scenes associated with these two guys, he became suspicious and kind of um, you know, inspected it a little bit more closely, felt something unusual in the belly of this fish, and then when they he got a knife and opened it up, these two massive 12-ounce lead balls roll out of its belly. So apparently, allegedly, and all those qualifiers, um, you know, these guys had been using uh, lead weights to enhance the weight of their catch. Is this a felony? It's a felony, uh, felony fraud is what the prosecutor tells me because – like I said, it would have been thirty or forty thousand dollars that they would have won under you know these this pretext that they you know cheated and uh, bumped up the weights. But the bigger controversy now is the fact that these guys supposedly won one of the major fall tournaments last year, and that was one hundred and fifty grand. And they've won several other tournaments, and we think it's in the neighborhood of uh, with bonuses, prize money. And sponsor money, probably four hundred grand that they've won, and the whole time with these people, you know, saying that they're cheating, you know, all this going on in the background. So there's a lot more money here involved than people think, and the nature of the tournament, Dan, is what makes it so difficult to police. So imagine a pro golf tournament, and the best golfers in the world go out, and it's just them and their caddy. And they play 18 and they come in and they turn in their card and there's nobody to say, 
you know, well, he didn't get a 26 on the back. You know, he didn't shoot a 29 on the front. And that's that's what happens is the, these guys go out on the lake at the at first light and they come back eight hours later. And you have to believe, unless you monitor it more closely or inspect it, you have to believe that they went out and caught those fish. Because there's a couple of things here that uh, I think some of the competitors thought the fish looked a little too old, so maybe they brought the fish with him. Also, they weren't... I think you donate the fish to the local markets, and they weren't uh, donating their fish to the local markets. Does that sound right here, Matt? Yes, you're absolutely right. Those are the two other red flags that have popped up in the past, because in a tournament that was held near Toledo um, in April... They won that tournament, uh, allegedly, and they went out and fished like four days before the tournament intensely, saying they were scouting for places. And then when they checked in their fish, several of the fishermen commented that their fish looked old. In other words, the the tournament runs Friday and Saturday. They go out on a Tuesday and fish and catch a couple big ones, put them in a live well in the boat, turn the oxygen on and pump and hope to keep them alive. And then when they go out and fish during the tournament, they mix those two big ones in with the fish they actually caught to try to bump up their catch. Mm. But if you if you were to donate your fish to the local food pantry, which every other fisherman did in that Toledo tournament except them, the people that are cleaning the fish would have said, hey, wait a minute, these are old. We're not giving this, you know, we're not feeding foul fish to the folks down at the soup kitchen. So those were the other red flags that they had caught fish earlier, put them in a live well, and then tried to mix those in with their catch. And then also the fact that they didn't donate their fish is a is a major red flag because these guys are all exceptional walleye fishermen. They have enough walleye in the freezer to feed them and their you know their wife's next husband. But you know they for some reason they kept their fish and nobody else did. We're talking to Matt Markey, Outdoors Editor for the Toledo Blade. Any reaction from these two, uh, Jacob Runyon and uh, Chase Kaminsky? Jacob Runyon said, I can't talk. Sorry. That's it. And nothing from Kaminsky. That's the extent of their of their reaction at this point. And I tried to find out yesterday, neither one of them has uh, legal representation as of this point, but I imagine once they're formally charged in the Cuyahoga County court, they will have uh, attorneys, you know, representing them and all, but uh, still very early in that process. And there's a lot of questions about, will they be sued by these uh, earlier tournaments by some of their, uh, their sponsors who've given them tens of thousands of dollars for misrepresentation there's a uh, Ohio Division of Wildlife investigation for violations that might have occurred out on the lake because you can't take game fish and manipulate them in any fashion. There's just a whole string of issues other than the fact that um, the reputations obviously you know, are ruined. If you cheat in golf in a pro tournament, you're done, and these guys have cheated in a, in a professional walleye tournament, so they're done. I thought it was going to get ugly when they started to weigh the fish, and then everybody started to gather, and then all of a sudden, the tournament director cut open a couple of those fish, and you saw those weights come out. And I thought these guys, these guys could get roughed up here. They would have, Dan, except for uh, the, the tournament director is a full-time police officer in Broadview Heights, which is a Cleveland suburb. So he knew how to at least try to maintain order. But there were a couple Cleveland police officers on hand. And he called them over to basically escort these guys away from the mob. But you're absolutely right. If the police had not been there, it would have been much more than what we saw on those videos. Mm-hmm. It would have been, uh, there would have been physical. Because a lot of those guys in that crowd just realized that all their suspicions were true and that they had been cheated out of tens of thousands of dollars in previous tournaments where they might have finished second or third to these guys. And we see this with guys in sports and other sports where they cheat too well. You know, if, if you put one weight in there, okay, maybe it's not as obvious. But as you said, this is what these guys do. They can feel a fish. They can see the size of the fish. They know exactly. And these guys got too greedy to make sure that they won this event or these other events. I think so. I think it worked in the past, and so they, they got brazen and they got sloppy 
And what they did was was actually very primitive, you know, using the, the lead weights is probably the most simple way to enhance the weight of a fish, but they went way over with these lead balls. And then they actually took other fish and stripped the flesh off of them and stuffed that down there to try to keep the lead from banging together and, uh, oh you know, God. making it even more obvious. But they got, they got sloppy, and I think it's like a lot of criminals after the first 10 bank robberies go well, then maybe they get sloppy with their routine. These guys just got sloppy and brazen and, you know, a little bit too uh, aggressive in their approach, and they're lucky they got out of there alive. Matt, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. We'll be following this, uh, whatever happens next. All right. Thank you, Dan. Enjoyed it. Matt Markey, Outdoors Editor for the Toledo Blade.